Vokoya is here, a brand new NLM model that promises to achieve 90% of the capabilities of ChatGPT running on your own computer. Hello humans, when we scan your AI overload and today we're going to be talking about Vokoya, a free NLM model trained on shared GPT and database of conversations by other users extracted from ChatGPT. And the creators of Vakuna promises that Vakuna can achieve up to 90% of the capabilities of ChatGPT. So, is it true? Is Vakuna really that good? So in this video I will show you how to install Vakuna for both the GPU and CPU with a web interface and we're going to be putting Vaikuna, Vai, Vaikuna, uh, Vai, oh, okay, okay, wait. Vakunia. Okay, Vakunia. I'm sure I'm not going to butcher this name for the entire video. And we're going to be putting Vakunia to the test to see if that model can really achieve those promised 90%. So let's go. Now if you want to use Vakunia yourself, you have three ways. The first is to use it on your own computer using a GPU. The second is by using your CPU. And the third is simply by using an online solution. And I'm going to show you how to do all of those three ways. And the first and probably the best way of using a large language model on your own computer is by using the Ubabuga text generation web UI, which is basically an open source gradual web UI for running large language models like Llama, Alpaca, GPTJ, Galactica, and of course Vukunia. And apparently its goal is to become the automatic 1111 of text generation. And you will see later that if you take a look at the interface, it is very very similar to the Stable Diffusion Automatic 11 web UI. So if you used Stable Diffusion before, this web UI interface will be very very familiar. And to install this, it's very simple. You're gonna click the link in the description down below, you're gonna arrive on this page, and then if you scroll down, you will see here a one click installer for Windows. And if you click on this link, it will automatically download a zip file onto your computer. So the next thing that you need to do is to download the Vacunia model. So again, just click the link in the description down below, you're gonna arrive on this page, and then you're gonna click on files and versions, then you're gonna click on the save tensor file, and then click on download. And this will download the main 8GB model file onto your computer. So while you're downloading the 8GB file, you're gonna take the Ubabuga Windows zip archive, then you're gonna extract it, so right click, extract the Ubabuga Windows, then you're gonna go inside that folder, and you will see here a bunch of files, but the only three files that you really need to take into account are downloadmodel.bat, install.bat, and startwebui.bat. These are the files that you're really gonna use. And if you don't know what you're doing, you have here an instructions file that basically tells you exactly what you need to do to install and run the text generation web UI. So first what you're gonna do is that you're gonna double click on the install.bat file. And then it's gonna ask you what is your GPU, if you have an NVIDIA GPU, or if you don't have one and you want to run it in CPU mode. So in that case I would put A and then press enter and then it will start installing all the requirements that it needs to run. Now I'm not going to do it because I've already done it before, and it does take a little bit of time to do it. It takes around between 10 and 15 minutes, and once this is done and everything is installed, you should have two brand new folders, the installer files and the text generation web UI. So then the second bat file that you're going to run is the download model. And this will basically give you a list of all the models that you can download right now. And that will be automatically installed for the web UI. So for example, let's say that you want the first one, the OPT 6.7 billion parameters. Well, you can simply input A and then press enter. And again, I'm not going to do it because it does take some time to download everything. But once this is done, if you go inside the text generation web UI folder in models, you will see here a folder for each one of your downloaded models. So in my case, as of right now, I have the Facebook OPT 6.7 billion parameters, which takes around 12 gigabytes of space. And I have the Vacunia 13 billion parameters. Now, as of right now, you should not have this folder. So for you, it should look something like this. And to get this folder, here's what you need to do. First, make sure that you have git installed. Otherwise, again, the git clone command will not work. Then you're going to go back to that page where you downloaded the safe tensors model. You're going to click on use in transformers. Click on this button right here. Then inside that models folder, you're going to click on the folder path, type cmd, press enter. And then you're going to press control V. And this will paste these two lines of code. And if it gives you a warning, you can just click on paste anyway. And then press enter. And now as you can see, we have a Vacunia folder that has all the files from the Hugging Face page repository. So once the download is complete for the safe tensor file, you're gonna select it, Control X to cut it, and then you're gonna paste it inside that folder. And now all the files inside that folder should be exactly the same as the one in the Hugging Face repository. And now we are almost done. So now we're gonna go back to the root folder where you have the startwebui.bat file. You're gonna right click on the startwebui.bat file, click on edit with notepad, and then here in call python server.py, after dash dash chat, 
You're gonna copy and paste these two arguments, dash dash w bits 4 and dash dash group size 128. Again, these two parameters will be in the description down below, so you can just copy and paste them. And then click on save. And now we are finally done. We are ready to run the text generation web UI. And to do this, all you have to do is just double click on the start web UI.bat file. And if it asks you which one of the models that you want to load, you're gonna choose the Vacunia model. So in my case, it's number two, so I'm just gonna put two and then press enter. And then it will give you a local URL, and to open it, just hold Ctrl and then left click. And there you go, now you have a beautiful web UI to run all of your LLMs for absolutely free on your computer. So if you scroll down and scroll up, you will see a bunch of options. But don't worry, it's really not that complicated, you're really gonna be using only a few buttons. So here for example, you have the input box, where you're gonna type your text, hey there, what's up? And then very quickly, since this is running on my GPU, I get an answer from the chatbot. So to send the text, you either press enter or click on generate, which basically does the exact same thing. Then you have the stop button. If you want to stop the assistant from generating the response, you have the impersonate button that will basically craft a response in the same personality in style as your chatbot, which I will show you later on. You have the regenerate, which basically allows you to regenerate the response from the chatbot. The copy last reply allows you to basically automatically copy what the assistant told you. The replace last reply allows you to replace what the assistant told you. But to be honest, it doesn't really work well and you're probably not going to use it. Remove last allows you to delete the previous answer. And the clear history allows you to delete the entire conversation. Then here you have a bunch of modes, which are still very new, they're still in constructions. And then here you have the character gallery, that allows you to talk to a specific character. So here for example, I'm talking to a character called Shiharu Yamada, which I don't really know who that is, but you can have a conversation with a character with a different personality, which allows you to get some very interesting responses. So now if you scroll up, you're gonna see also a bunch of options, you're gonna see a bunch of tabs. If you click on the character tab, here you can input your name, the name of your assistant, the base greeting, the personality of your assistant. If you want, you can also input an end of third string, and you can also create and upload a character that was created previously. Now, if you are interested about that, I can probably make a future video about this. So let me know in the comments down below if you want to see something like that. So if you're interested in a video about this, definitely let me know in the comments down below. So then you have the parameters tab that allows you to choose a preset to change a bunch of options which I did try some presets here and there, but personally it's very difficult to me to really understand which preset is really the best one. Now one parameter that I highly suggest you to change is the max new tokens. This will basically allow you to get a longer answer from your chatbot. So if for example you feel like its answer is too short, then you can definitely increase the parameter to get a way longer answer. So then you have the training tab, where you can train a LoRa on your own style or on something else. Personally, I haven't really played with this yet, so I'll probably leave that for another video. And then finally, you have the interface mode. And you have here four different modes. Well, in reality, it's only three. You have the chat interface mode, which basically looks like this, exactly like this was ChatGPT. Then you have the default mode. So if I click on apply and restart the interface, the interface is gonna look something like that. You're gonna have this kind of interface where you can input a question. And if you click on generate, you will get the answer from the chatbot on the right. And if you choose the notebook interface, it's gonna look very similar to the default interface. But the only difference is that when you ask a question and you click on generate, you basically get an answer on the same exact page. Then you can then come and modify however you want. Now, the one thing that you need to know about this interface is that if you don't choose the chat interface, the chatbot will not have memory from your previous conversation. So you're not gonna have the same experience as if you were using ChatGPT. But the reason why this interface is actually really, really interesting is because it allows you to nudge the conversation to something that you want to hear. So for example, I'm gonna choose my Vacunia prompts. And if I ask something illegal, for example, like, so something like this, and if I click on generate, it's gonna tell me something like, I'm sorry, it's not appropriate, it's not legal, I cannot answer this question, etc., etc. However, if now, I write the first sentence for the chatbot to something like this, and then I click on generate. Lo and behold, what do I get here? I get a recipe for, well, I'm gonna stop it now because of YouTube, but uh, you know where this is going. So thanks to this interface, there is a way to nudge the conversation to something that you want to hear, which makes this very, very powerful, but also pretty dangerous. Oh, and also, if you want to use, like me, the Vacunia prompt syntax that you see right here, which is the official syntax that you're supposed to use, I prepared a prompts preset that you can use, so just click the link in the description down below, download the Vacunia prompts file, then you're gonna take that file, go inside the text generation web UI folder, into prompts, and then you're gonna put it right here. And then inside your web UI, you're gonna click here to refresh the folder, 
And then you're gonna select the Vicuña prompts. And now you will see the official Vicuña prompts syntax. Now you don't necessarily need to use this, but often it does create better results. Now before we start playing around a little bit with the Vicuña model, and see how good it is, if for some reason this interface does not work for you, I'm also gonna show you how to install and use the Llama.cpp, which is basically another way for you to use the Vicuña model on your computer using your CPU. And the installation for this is even simpler. So again, you're gonna click the link in the description down below, you're gonna arrive on this page, then you're gonna click here on the releases, and then you're gonna click here on the first avx.zip file and download it onto your computer. So then you're gonna need another special model. So again, click the link below. You're gonna arrive on this page, click on files and versions, and then you're gonna choose the latest revision file. So in my case, as of right now, it is the 13b4 bit rev1.bin, and then click on download. So then you're gonna take your zip file, just like the other one, you're gonna extract it. So right click, extract to, and then inside that folder, you will see a bunch of exe files, but don't worry, you're not gonna use any of this. You're simply gonna take the bid model that you downloaded, Control X to cut it, Control V to paste it, and then you're gonna click on the last mega link and download the run vicuña.bat file. And for this, a big thank you to Spreadsheet Warrior for providing the batch code for this file. So you're gonna take that run vicuña.bat file, Control X to cut it, and then you're gonna paste it right here. And we are done, because now all you have to do is just double click on the run vicuña.bat file. And just like that, it is currently running on your computer using your CPU. And this is actually a very simple and very optimized way of running this model because this only uses around 4 gigabytes of RAM. Now it is a little slow, it is definitely a little slower compared to the GPU one, but it works perfectly fine. And actually I'm gonna say that I tried this previously during my testing and the result that I got from this model were sometimes better compared to the GPU one. But of course personally I still prefer using this web interface because of how easy it is to customize the parameters, the number of tokens, and using the special interface mode. Okay, so now that we spend so much time trying to install all of this and everything is finally running correctly, how exactly does Vicuña compares to ChatGPT? Well, for this, I actually prepared a bunch of tests that we're gonna run on both ChatGPT and Vicuña and then compare them together. And the first test that we're gonna do is to ask them both to write a short story. So for example, if I write something like, write me a short story about a time traveling scientist, and then click on generate, and as you can see, Vicuña wrote me a pretty long short story about a scientist traveling through time. So now if I write the same exact thing for ChatGPT, of course it has also written a pretty similar story. But to determine which one is the best one, how about we ask GPT-4 which one was the best? So if I write something like, here's two short stories about a time-traveling scientist wrote by two LLMs. Analyze those two stories and rate them both on a scale from 1 to 10 on the quality of the story. Then I put something like story 1 written by Vicuña, and I put the entire story, and then I put story 2 written by chat. So now, if I press enter, we actually get an analysis and a rating for both stories. And actually, in this instance, GPT-4 rated the first story written by Vicuña an 8.5 out of 10, whereas the story written by Chad GPT was rated as 7 out of 10. So actually, in this instance, Vicuña apparently wrote a better story than Chad GPT, at least according to GPT-4. Now the second test will be a simple translation exercise. So if I input something like, translate the following English sentence into French, the weather is beautiful today, I would love to go to the beach and eat some delicious ice cream. So if I click on generate, I get something like this, which is, um, okay, but not perfect. I can already tell you that this one is not the right word for ice cream. So now if I input this into ChatGPT, I definitely get a much better translation. But again, let's actually ask GPT-4 to rate both of these translations. So I wrote something like, here's two translations of the English sentence, the weather is beautiful today, I would love to go to the beach and eat some delicious ice cream in French, written by two LLMs, and again, analyze those two translations and rate them both on a scale on one to 10 on the quality of the translation. So now if I press enter, we get something like this, which indeed, as I said previously, the first translation made by Vicuña is not exactly correct, which is why GPT-4 rated this a 6 out of 10. And the next translation was pretty much perfect, which is why it got a rating of 10 out of 10. So in this example at least, ChatGPT is definitely the winner. So the next task is to analyze an article and create a very short summary. So for this I'm gonna be using a very short article that I found at random, I'm just gonna select it. So there you go, I just wrote something like summarize this article in 4 short sentences and then I paste in the entire article. And now if I click on generate, and there you go, I got something like this. Now something that I forgot to say is that currently there is a small problem on the text generation web UI. As you can see right here, 
For some reason, it just does not stop talking, and it even impersonates the human and assistant and asks questions to himself and answers those questions himself, and it keeps doing that until it has exhausted all the tokens available or until you click on the button stop, which is kinda annoying, but again since this model is very new, maybe again by the time this video comes out, this issue will already be solved. So now I'm gonna do the exact same thing for ChatGPT, and I got something like this, so again I wrote something like, here are two summaries in four short sentences of an article. Those summaries were written by two LLMs. Analyze those two summaries and rate them both on a scale from 1 to 10. Then I inputted the original article. Then I inputted the summary in four sentences written by Vacunia. And then I inputted the summary in four sentences written by ChatGPT. And now if I press enter, and again I got a rating for both. The first summary written by Vacunia was rated an 8 out of 10. And the summary written by ChatGPT was rated a 9 out of 10. So again here for the language part they are actually very close. But again since Vacunia was trained on ChatGPT prompts and discussions, ChatGPT will always be on top. But again the difference between them is really not that big. Especially since this was written by a model running locally on your own computer. And then finally for the last test, which I'm pretty sure that Vacunia is gonna fail, is a simple programming test. Because all I want is to create a web page with a button that when clicked displays an alert message saying hello world. And I also want Vacunia to style the button using CSS to make it visually appealing. So now if I press enter, I get something like this. So I'm just gonna select this entire code, Control c to copy it, then I'm gonna create an empty HTML file, and inside I'm gonna put the code, save the file, and now if I run it, I get this very weird page with some kind of, well, button, but unfortunately if I click on this, um, nothing, nothing happens. So maybe if I tell Vacunia that the code doesn't work, it might change it and give me a correct solution. So there you go, now it has given me another code, so I'm gonna try it out. So now if I run the page, we basically get the exact same button, uh, if I click on it, oh it actually works! I, I thought this was not gonna work, but actually it does. So the code does work, oh I'm actually surprised, I'm actually impressed. Because I'm gonna tell you right now, usually the code written by Vacunia works like maybe once every 3 or 4 tries. But actually this one works pretty well, so that's pretty cool. But of course I'm pretty sure that if I ask the same question to ChatGPT, I'm gonna get something way way better, and way faster too. So if I click on copy code, then put the code right here, then launch the page, I definitely get a way better button that if I press on it, does exactly what I ask for. So yeah, although Vacunia actually did a pretty good code, and a code that worked, ChatGPT definitely did it a little bit better, and it did it in one single pass. So yeah, again, ChatGPT is definitely the winner here. So yeah, there you go. Although Vacunia actually lost to ChatGPT, for some of the tasks it was actually pretty close. And for a model that is running on your own computer for absolutely free, this is definitely really really cool. Oh, and also, if you don't want to install it on your own computer, and you just want to try it out, you can simply use the demo website and use it anywhere you want. You can use it on your computer, you can use it on your tablet, on your phone. This works the exact same way as if this was on your computer. So yeah, there you go, that was Vicuña, a free NLM model that is super powerful, probably the most powerful model that I ever tried to run on my computer, and that you can use for absolutely free. And also keep in mind that this will get even better over time. This is just the beginning, and that's pretty cool. And there we have it folks, thank you guys so much for watching, don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, thank you also so much to my Patreon supporters for supporting my videos, you guys are absolutely awesome, you people are the ones who support me so I can make these videos for you, so thank you so much, and I'll see you guys next time, bye bye.